You dancing bachata with your woman in the middle of the dance floor. She resting her head on your chest and holding you so tight you can feel her heartbeat. She is lost in the sauce. And you know how you can get lost? If you don't understand how the compass work in your plane. Here are the compass errors and turns. There you go! Boom! Understanding basic compass errors and turns can help you navigate any situation. Let's start with why do you even care about the compass to begin with? If you think about the difference between the compass and the heading indicator in the inside of your plane, why is it that you always reference the compass to adjust the heading indicator? Why don't you just fly off the compass? If the compass is giving you the correct magnetic north direction or wherever you're going, why do you have to constantly every 10 to 15 minutes keep adjusting the heading indicator and just forget about the heading indicator and just fly off the compass? The reason why you don't do that is multifaceted. Number one reason why you don't do that is simply because if you're ever in this inside of your plane next time or you're ever flying around doing a lesson, just try to go straight for a second and then try to make a left hand turn and only focus in on the compass. Don't look at the heading indicator while you're making that left hand turn. And your compass is gonna indicate that it's like you're actually going to the right instead of to the left. There's a reason for that. It's because of the positioning of the compass is on the outside of the plane. So the positioning is a lot different. What the heading indicator does is it's, oh, it's of course a gyro instrument and it brings that in the inside of the cockpit and makes it better for you. And actually when you turn left, it indicates that you're going to the left. That's number one. And then the second reason, and one of the most important, because it's a compass, it has a lot of errors involved with it. This which is why you want to go off the heading indicator. So now that you thoroughly understand why you use the heading indicator. Let's talk about the situations where you may be necessary for you to use the compass. The number one situation, if something happens to your heading indicator, it is run off the vacuum pump. If the vacuum pump goes down, two instruments are going to be compromised, your attitude indicator and your heading indicator. They're no longer going to be functioning properly, so you may have to navigate off of your compass. So you want to be aware of any kind of errors that it may have so you can navigate properly off of that. A, a, a major key to understanding the compass errors and turns is understanding the difference between magnetic north and true north. Your compass is a magnetic north device, so it's going to vary from what's happening in true north situations. If you ever want to kind of experience this, then just go outside the crib, particularly when the sun is setting, or maybe you're kicking it at the beach or in the mountains, wherever you are. When the sun is setting, we know the sun sets in the west. So based on where the sun is setting, find the north position. And then once you find the north position, take out your compass, maybe the compass on your phone, if you have an app on your phone, and just look at where the compass is pointing and look at where you're standing. You're standing where you think north is based on where the sun is setting. And then look at your compass and you're gonna see that it's slightly different. It's not pointing exactly where you think it is. That slight difference is the difference between true north and magnetic north. When you think about true north, just think about geographic north, where the north pole is. Boom, coming straight down the longitudinal axis of the Earth, there's your north position. That's your true north. When you talk about magnetic north, you gotta think about the Earth being like this big magnet, weighing itself down in those magnetic fields that are going to vary from time to time. Where, north, where magnetic north started many years ago is different than where it's that gravity and everything's pulling down on the Earth currently right now as it's constantly moving, ever so slightly, but definitely moving. So it's gonna shift off that true north position. That variation is a major key in understanding your compass errors. Let go, boom! Just like in all things in aviation, there's an easy way to remember everything by just inserting an acronym. The acronym you wanna to remember to remember the compass errors is VOID, V-O-D-D, -D, VOID. The reason why this can help you remember this, think about what the word VOID mean. If you were to void something like V-O-I-D, that means of course, like a transaction error has occurred, which is reason why the transaction had it to be voided. So you wanna remember that, that helps you kinda of understand void. Okay, what does that acronym mean? Variation, isolation, deviation, and dips. Let's start at the very top of that thing, talking about, of course, variation. And that simply is just what we just already covered, the difference between true north and magnetic north. They will never be the same. They've always gonna be a difference between those two. So understand that your compass is operating off of magnetic north, which is different than true north. So when you do a lot of your flight planning, you're gonna to have to calculate the variation between those two. So understanding that variation is understanding one of your compass errors.
A. Bro, the next era in void, of course, is isolation. Isolation is very simple. You got to go back to our seesaw example. You understand how aviation, we use the seesaw kind of example a lot. You use it when you think about weight and balance and balancing on that seesaw. You can remember that same seesaw example again when it comes to compass errors. And the way you're going to remember that is the simple fact that inside of your compass and the way that it's operating, the way that it's doing, there is a magnet sitting on a pivot that looks just like that seesaw. That's how it's balancing itself out and figuring out which direction you're going in it favors the north and inside of that magnet that's on that pivot it's kind of has some fluid around it you can kind of see this fluid next time that you're in the cockpit look at your compass real closely and you can kind of see some fluid sitting on top of there and check that make sure that's still operating correctly inside and that fluid surrounding that seesaw kind of movement and magnet and pivot is actually was helping things balance itself out it kind of like reduces a lot of that isolation inside of it so it doesn't pivot and it kind of just stays nice and firm as much so in turn until you get ready to turn and then that's when it kind of like indicates exactly where you're turning obviously you can't put or you can only put so much fluid in there to kind of dampen that isolation so there's going to be a slight isolation error that's what you need to be aware of variation isolation two of the major errors in dealing with your compass Lego. Hey, and next on that void acronym that you want to know about, of course, when it comes to your compass errors is deviation. Deviation just simply involves the magnetic disturbance that happens with any time a magnet is involved in anything. You may have experienced this where you've had any kind of magnet around electronic devices. And then maybe you were told not to do that for a very good reason. It can disrupt the flow of those electronic devices by putting a magnet near it. Think about all the comms and avionics and everything that you have in your aircraft. And you got a magnetic compass sitting there. Obviously, that could cause a little bit of deviation, a little bit of error. And that's where the deviation comes from. When your compass is fully installed, maybe it was installed exactly correctly and the reading was good. But over time, having all those comms, having those avionics, having everything involved in that cockpit is going to get thrown off a little bit because of the magnets on it. This is why you have a magnetic compass car that's usually located near your magnetic compass. And that compass car is kind of giving you a little slight corrections. It may tell you something along the lines like, oh, you want to turn the heading 060 then you really should turn the heading 062 that's why those slight corrections are there it's based off that magnetic disturbance that can happen with any kind of magnetic compass a boom and finally the last on that acronym void the d is for dip errors and one of the dip errors you want to be aware of is ands accelerate north decelerate south easy to remember ands accelerate north decelerate south key ingredients you want to remember about this one one it only applies if you're flying east or west so if you're flying east or west and let's just say you're cruising along at a certain rpms and then you decide to just accelerate nice and smoothly when you accelerate your compass is going to make it seem like you're going to the, the north a little bit and then it's going to correct itself and straighten back out for you if you decelerate let's just say you were going real fast and you pull the power out a little bit and reduce those rpms it's going to make it seem like you went to the south a little bit and then correct and then it's going to correct itself so if you accelerate it's going to go to the north if you decelerate it's going to go to the south it's going to correct itself but it's going to give you that quote unquote dip error it's going to dip one way before straightening up just think about somebody who's cool and they walk and they have a little dip to one side dip to the north or dip to the south that's kind of how you want to remember that dip error and accelerate north decelerate south boom the last dip error you want to concern yourself with is undershoot north overshoot south unos and the way you remember this unos and how, why you need to undershoot north and why do you need to overshoot south is simply just think about the magnetic compass favoring the north let's just say you were floating that thing nice and big chilling and you were on an easterly heading and you wanted to turn to the north if you turn to the north it's going to favor the north so that means that you want to undershoot exactly where you want to land so instead of navigating you want to land exactly north you're going to start turning out on that heading and get it to land a little bit early. You want to undershoot where you want to land so you can hit right on target and right on the point. Same if you were on that easterly heading and you were going to the south. You want to overshoot a little bit. Go past it a little bit to land right on the south. It's going to always favor that north. So whenever you turn to the north, you want to be a little bit early on that. Whenever you go to the south, you want to be a little bit late on that, on that turning, on that rollout to make sure you're always hitting it correctly 
always understand exactly where those errors are located. There are no errors on this UNOS when doing east to west travel. Only when going to the north or going to the south. Hey, boom! And these are the compass errors that you need to know so you don't get lost in the sauce. Hey, don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste. This is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free, fun videos to help you learn everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swing it and bang it. That thing, hey, learn it one time.